Good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to we can't believe is our is our fifth webinar in, in our in our series. My name is Aidan Shine. Um, I'm CEO of Southeast Pick, and delighted to see so many of you signing on again this morning. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about uh, payroll and the payroll function uh, before, during, and after the COVID nineteen crisis. So it was um, we just realised that we had a, a cluster of, of payroll companies that we had worked with over the years, based here in the southeast, and thought it would be interesting to have a seminar based around this particular topic. Um, I, and we, this is something we'll discuss as we go forward in the webinar, but we believe that the COVID-19 crisis has had a significant impact on the payroll function um, in terms of you know, the wage subsidy scheme and how companies manage that process within, uh, within, their, overall, within their overall business. So we're delighted um, that we have three companies, as I said, based here in the Southeast. We have uh, FlexiWage, uh, Paysar and CAR Payroll, and we'll get them to introduce themselves uh, in, in a moment and hear their stories. Uh, so today, the agenda and the format, we're going to go through just a very brief introduction to the BIC for those of you online who don't, who don't know us, I promise won't take more than 30 seconds. Um, and then we'll get the, the, the panel to introduce their companies and what they do. They're all in the payroll uh, sector, but approaches in, 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 very different, in very different ways and be interesting to hear uh, each of their, their stories. And then we'll have a, a general discussion uh, in and around the payroll function um, and, and see what comes out of that. We would encourage you all, as we have in, in our past seminars, to you know, be active in terms of the questions. There's a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, so we'd encourage you to type in your questions as you go along. And Rosemary, uh, my colleague there, will, will handle those questions. And we'll also have a, a couple of polls uh, throughout the, the webinar. I think there's two questions we have today. And in, in past webinars, that has thrown up some very interesting results for us. Uh, so, uh, Rosemary, uh, I'll be relying on you to, to prompt me when we're doing those, those polls, please, um, uh, to move forward. So, uh, so our, our, three, our three speakers uh, today, and as they'll introduce themselves uh, in a mo, uh, we have uh, Jonathan Shaw from, from FlexiWage, we have uh, Trevor Townsend from Paysar, and uh, last but not least, Helen Dooley from, from CR Payroll. So we're really looking forward to hearing their thoughts, insights, and views on, on the payroll function. Just a very quick uh, intro to Southeast Speak and what we do. Uh, we are a not-for-profit organization working here in the Southeast, working mainly with early stage companies and entrepreneurs that are uh, looking to develop uh, innovative startups uh, in the region and beyond. Um, ideally, we like to work with clients that are, as I said, that have that piece of innovation in there and also looking to scale and grow. And, and we are supported in doing this uh, heavily by Enterprise Ireland, who fund a lot of our activities in, in this particular area. We're part of a network of four BICs in Ireland, uh, ourselves here in the southeast. We have Cork, Galway and Dublin as well, doing similar things to ourselves. And we work very, very closely with all the uh, other uh, players in the startup ecosystem here in the southeast. How we do that, we, we like to work intensively with our clients in a one-to-one in -one type relationship. Uh, the goal is to, I suppose, develop a, a good uh, investor-ready or strategic robust uh, business plan. That's the kind of the end of, of, of the process. But look, I won't, I won't take up too much time on describing who we are. I encourage you to go onto southeastbig.ie to have a look, uh, see who we are and what we do, and by all means, get, get in touch. So if I suppose if I could, uh, as, as a starting point, uh, if I may just uh, ask each of our esteemed panellists in turn to describe uh, and give us a bit of background, uh, maybe three or four minutes each, if that's okay, guys, uh, onto your companies and what you do and how you operate within the, the, the payroll sector. So Jonathan, maybe if I could kick off with yourself. Yeah, no problem. Morning, all. Um, so yeah, I'm the CFO of FlexiWage Limited. And what FlexiWage? FlexiWage is a financial wellness benefit for employees, which enables them to schedule their income um, in a pay frequency that suits their needs without impacting a company's ability say, to process a monthly payroll. Um, it also allows, or our app allows or enables companies to transition from a weekly pay cycle to a monthly one, allowing their employees to continue to be paid weekly after transition has occurred so 
This reduces payroll administration costs by around 75% per year. Um, I suppose although 32% of employees are still paid weekly, mostly in the manufacturing and service industries, such as hospitality, where early pay is common, the majority of companies have now started to move to monthly. And while a weekly pay, while it's great for an employee, it burdens the employer with additional administration costs associated with running a payroll. Um, next wage, we, we integrate with all payroll systems, so there's no need to change provider or system. It, it adds on simply without a complex implementation. So it's a bit about, about FlexiWage and what we do. Brilliant. Uh, thanks, Jonathan. Nice and concise. Uh, Trevor, can you can you tell us a bit about what pays are and what you guys do and your journey so far? Sure, yeah. So uh, we founded the business uh, in 2016 and our focus is on um, standardizing uh, collaboration around international payroll. Um, Myself and my co-founder are formerly from uh, ADP, so they would be the largest payroll outsourcing provider globally. And we saw an opportunity in the market to be able to provide international businesses with uh, visibility on the payroll processes globally, um, gather their data, manage their data flows, drive uh, analytics, um, which is typically pretty pretty tough because most international businesses have 30 plus systems that are trying to cobble together the source payroll data from and also different payroll engines from, from around the world. And what that does is it gives someone in a central function back at headquarters visibility on payroll process, um, you know, exactly where you are at any point in time, really rich analytics uh, around uh, your payroll costs, which in most service organizations represent 70% of, of uh, uh, the company's PML integration with your finance systems through our GL Connect module and visibility in your compliance uh, um, obligations uh, globally. Um, and mo mo most recently, we've uh, introduced um, an employee portal which allows the company to give the same user experience to online uh, employee payslips uh, in 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 the various countries around the world. Um, we also sit on top of your existing payroll infrastructure. So we do this in what we would call an open way. So you don't have to rip out your existing in-house payroll. You don't have to rip out your uh, any of your third-party relationships you have around the world uh, with uh, payroll outsourcing firms that you might be using in different countries. We sit on the top of all of that and give you that kind of cockpit control around the payroll process, which I think given the, the disruption we've seen over the last few months is, is, is pretty tough. Uh, so that's a little bit about PayZar. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Trevor. And Helen, you've been wait, waiting patiently in the wings there. Can, can, you, can you tell us a little bit about, about CR Payroll and what you guys do? I will indeed, Aidan. And thank you to yourself and Rosemary for organising today and inviting us um, to take part in this discussion as well. So we provide emergency or contingency payroll cover um, by becoming the backup to your existing payroll team. So CR Payroll was friend, founded by Mairead Coughlin after she saw a gap in the market for the availability of experienced payroll professionals at critical times. Now, as we all know, payroll is something that requires action to be taken at specific times on specific days. Um, but what we can do is we can continue processing your payroll from a stage at which your emergency has occurred and ensuring that we bring it to the next payroll stage or to completion for you. So we ensure that your reputation is kept intact and as is very, very important, your workforce is always paid. Now we have a guaranteed two hour contractual SLA. That means if your payroll again is processed and um, needs to be processed in an emergency situation, that we'll continue from the last point of processing and therefore avoiding payroll failure, which nobody wants to, to incur. We also do project support um, for any payroll related tasks that are needed. And as the guy said, it's a common theme for us as well, that it doesn't matter what software and platform that you're working on, that we support a wide range of platforms and we have experience in a wide range of those as well. So we are whatever your need is for payroll professionals or payroll people, that is us. Brilliant. 
Thank you so much. And um, my, I, I was worried that um, I was going to have to interrupt you and, and cut you off, which were all brilliant, nice and concise and all the rest of it well rehearsed. Um, and it's fascinating to me that, as I said, broadly, you're, you're tarred with the, the payroll brush, but three, of you, three companies operating in, in a different way within, within the sector. So it's absolutely fascinating. If we can just kick off the discussion, I suppose, just some thoughts from each of you. What what has happened or what has the effect been on payroll, the payroll function, I suppose, since the COVID-19 crisis kicked off there, you know, mid to, to late March? What, what, what have you guys uh, observed there? Uh, Trevor, if I could start with you on this one. Sure. So I suppose the, the primary thing has been um, obviously people uh, moving away from uh, the office and all of the infrastructure that they have around the, uh, the office. So. If I think about payroll, if I think about the different sources of information, it could be in, in the Irish context, it could be from BHI, other benefit providers, your uh, si your systems to gather hourly um, based information, sales commission, all of your other variable data. So you may have infrastructure built in, in your business around that. That is difficult in a remote context unless you very strong business continuity planning to be able to access that. So. What we've seen, I suppose, is on one hand, we've seen businesses trying to cope with moving uh, on a long-term basis to uh, remote working. Um, then on the provider side, because we kind of sit in the middle between the, the customer of a payroll service and the provider of a payroll service, on the provider side then, well, they have the same problem because they're used to a, you know, an office-based type environment and then they've had to move to remote working. And in the, in the middle, it's not just the, the remote working, um, payroll is a compliance driven function. So what you've had uh, in Ireland, for example, is the, the COVID um, uh, subsidy that came through and, uh, and thankfully it has for an awful lot of businesses. Um, so, so the payroll implications then for both the company itself, like who would qualify for this payment? And then what are the implications for the, for the employee at the end of the year? All of that needs to be um, figured out and needs to be kind of absorbed in the business. So it's been an all, a, a lot of change um, that that people are are responding to, and it's um, I suppose one of the things I'm I'm seeing is that um, I, I don't want to describe it as as firefighting, but it is disruption. Uh, but we're seeing the very best of people as well trying to pull through to make sure everyone gets paid. Um, it might not always be perfect and like the benchmark for payroll is 100% right all of the time. Um, you know, it's, it's unforgiving uh, in terms of what the, what the basic expectation is. Um, but we've seen people in companies and providers uh, around the industry really, really pulling out the stop to get, to get people paid. Amongst all of this, as I say, all of this legislative change of, of how do you pay people and how do you calculate their taxes, et cetera. Uh, as well as we're now all uh, we're all uh, broadcasting from our own homes today, so it's, uh, so 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 I think they're kind of the, the they're the main changes I'm seeing. Lots of turbulence. Yeah, and it's, I suppose it's the one it's the one thing that there's there's no leeway. You can't get somebody's pay wrong. You know, it has to be right mm -hmm. all the time. You know, so that that's the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, Helen, if we get your thoughts on what what you guys have seen since the whole thing started. Yeah, I'd echo um, Trevor's um, thoughts as well. Like COVID-19 has really put all companies on the edge. Like it's impacted the way we've all worked significantly, no matter the size of the organisation that you're in. Like we've seen significant numbers of jobs are still at risk or have unfortunately been lost. And a lot of our businesses, I suppose, on the verge of shutting shop or already having done so. But on the flip side, we've also seen a lot of companies that are hiring and expanding their product and their employee base and quite significantly. Um, so you could say that it has been like a true time of extremes. I think we've all used the word quite regularly. It's, the, it's been unprecedented. It's a, been a word that has been used quite regularly in the, in the past couple of months. Now, the very foundations of how organizations have worked, as Trevor said, working remotely has been a big shift for everybody. And it has shaken a lot of organizations. And amid all of this chaos, people still had to be paid. Um, now, whether that was people working through, as um, Trevor said, the temporary wage subsidy scheme and trying to figure it out, reducing salaries, cutting salaries, or even on the flip side of processing new employees. 
but I think the payroll world has really stood up to that challenge, like from ensuring that the software updates were completed to allow for those new processing rules to be implemented. Um, on the, the other side of it then, if it meant long hours for the payroll professionals validating, calculating, checking all of the outputs to ensure that those payrolls are actually correct. And this has been done time and time and time again over the past couple of months and is continuing to be done as well. Um, I think from a, very much from a payroll professional's perspective, they've managed to decipher what it has been a torrent of information that has been thrown at them from different sources, from revenue, from government, software vendors, from HR within their own communities as well. But they're making decisions based on that information, along with the intimate knowledge that they have of their own companies. And then they're ultimately keeping the employees being paid on time and correctly. Now, I think we're still in the midst of it and we're still surviving, which is good. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of payroll professionals out there that are quite looking forward to a little bit of downtime at some stage and a return to, I suppose, what may be a normal payroll schedule. I don't think we actually know what that looks like at the moment, but it's something that we're looking forward to in the future. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's new normal is applicable right across the board in every sector and every function, everything. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah. And what about awareness levels? Would you, you know, that, that you know, you provide the service that you provide. Was, was there companies that kind of said to you, "God, we never thought about that before until until a crisis hits." Was there more awareness of the importance of of the payroll function? Maybe there is definitely, and I, I think as well that um, Trevor alluded to earlier on about contingency plans that were probably works of fiction. Um, previously but then had to be implemented as kind of as, you know that they had to actually work and that they were dusted off mm -hmm. and kind of um, implemented um, and looking at the longevity of those as well is is really important but I think it's that it's a lot every business every function every department in every business has been affected by this so it's been a real when we t try and take the i suppose the positives from it that it has been a real community effort as well that people are clubbing together trying to get through this and that there is an awareness out there that it is a stage it will end but we need to get through it and we need to get through it together thanks helen and jonathan from flexi wage perspective what what have you guys been seeing in the last couple of months yeah, um, just kind of like what Trevor and, and Helen have been saying too. Like, obviously, there's been a lot of a lot of change and, and uncertainty really since since March, and with lots of companies, as you said, um, allowing staff to work from home, and and I said some businesses then just completely shutting up shop and, and not able to work from home because their business it doesn't it doesn't suit that. But I think with with lots of change and uncertainty, there also presents um, a lot of possible. Or a lot of issues as well, um, namely being the, the COVID-19 wage temporary wage scheme. That in itself, like there was a lot of documentation to, to go through, and uh, you know you need you needed to read it a few times, and it changed a few times over the last few weeks too to get a good understanding of that. And when you're actually processing payroll, you know are you doing it right? Um, you've you've challenges then from employees. Am I to face a large tax bill at the end of the year and different things like that. So they were all challenges. But but also the challenge that we, we found was that, you know, for employees that have been working from home and in particular like maybe agents or fractioneers or payroll bureaus, um, as you said, a lot, it's likely that a lot of them now would have been running client payrolls from home. Um, and, and with that, you have potential issues such as G, GDPR issues. So if they've restored copies of client payrolls on their own personal PCs, like how, how, how do you know they're secure? Um, they advise clients that their payroll data is now being processed offsite. And like these are issues then that we have to kind of look at and address and serious consideration to. That was just okay. something else that put up around the GDPR. Cool. No, interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, thanks for that, that. Those initial thoughts, guys. Rosemary, I think we have we have our first of our two polls. Yeah, folks, we'd like to get you involved now and see get some perspective from you on on what's happening within your organisations, possibly at the moment. Um, and the first poll is uh, this one. Hopefully, you can see it on the screen. Um, was your payroll function disrupted during the crisis? Um, so the the options there are yes, no, somewhat, but we managed. Um, so 
let us know um, how that goes and we leave it there in the background and um, you can uh, come back to us with the answers and we'll come back to you with the answers at the end. Thanks Excellent. a lot. Okay, thanks Rose. Yeah so Jill we would encourage um, you to have a look at the at that, at that polling question because as I said in, in past webinars some very interesting stats have come out of it. Um, so in, in, into the meat of it then uh, as I said, we have three broad areas that we want to we want to look at and the first of which is is um, innovations in payroll, how has how has payroll maybe changed even before COVID but and, and, and during COVID? Uh, we we'll talk about the future where it's going uh, at, at the end. So um so around that innovations in payroll piece, who wants to who wants to kick off with that? Anybody with initial thoughts on that? I'll jump in there, Aidan. Yeah. Thanks, so this was when you when you talk about innovation in payroll and over the, the past couple of months, I think innovation was definitely needed to interpret some of the guidelines that were published on the temporary wage subsidy scheme. Um, the, um, I suppose the frequency of which they were received as well, as Jonathan said, that it was, um, you know, very the innovative minds were needed to kind of look at them and see kind of what exactly was actually needed and what needed to be put in place specifically for um, your organisations. Mm -hmm. But I suppose from an overall perspective of innovation, when you truly look at it, innovation in a company, you need to first assess the challenges that you're facing within your company. Um, execution of ideas to address those challenges while you, you are truly ensuring then that you're bringing value to your company and to your, and to your customer. Like we've seen, as the, the guys have said as well, that there's been an increase in need for companies to go on cloud-based payroll systems to allow them to work remotely. Um, but when you look at that, there's another deliverable that's great from that, and that's the ease of scalability that you have then um, available to you. Now, there's been a massive, uh, I suppose, acceleration in the terms of technology in the payroll space, and you've wonderful examples here today from Paysar and from FlexiWage with their solutions. Um, from a COVID-19 perspective and looking at from a payroll perspective, um, I think it's highlighted the need for innovative thinking around converting what should be well written and documented contingency plans or even creating contingency plans kind of into those actionable strategies um, i suppose now what we need to do is kind of look back um, and focus on the challenges that were met during the execution of those plans and um, making sure that they are repeatable that they have longevity also um, but that you are still bringing value to your company, to your employees, and ultimately to your customers as well with whatever plan you do put in place. Um, I think a lot of contingency plans um, should be converted into living documents. And as I said earlier, that they shouldn't really be um, works of fiction, as a lot of them, um, unfortunately, are. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, it's interesting that um, even with the... The back to work protocols and all the rest of it there's, there's one of the complaints the initial complaints has been that a lot of these protocols are in themselves just like covers without any meat in them at all that there's a, they're not actually practical documents so it's interesting with that and yeah. trevor what about what about your thoughts on innovations and payroll and that yeah you know, you've been you've, you've come up with innovative solutions mm -hmm. yourselves but overall in terms of of the payroll function how has well, it today it, evolved it's funny that the the payroll industry um, and I, I must point out Ireland is a hotbed for innovation in this in this sector uh, at the moment. But the payroll industry historically, was, oh, why why is that, Trevor? If I can interrupt, why why Ireland? Um, well, I suppose if we think about Ireland as um, I suppose we're, we're we're a hub for international business activity. If we take a look at the number of uh, global companies that have operating centres here in Ireland. Um, you know, companies are here. Um, they're they're trying to solve uh, they're trying to solve problems for for the Irish uh, employee bases, but they also then have regional responsibilities. It could be for EMEA, it could be for um, you know Northern Europe, where they've you know they've accounts payable, they have um, accounts receivable functions, they they have payroll functions, they have HR and administration functions here. And um, and I think what's happening is um, we're we're kind of mixed up in 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 those in those conversations depending on where we've come from in our careers and if we're if we're out talking to 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 lots of companies that are you know and you're hearing um, you're hearing kind of uh, challenges that they have in the industry you know some of that is going to uh, spark off um, I think among some people some thoughts to say well maybe 
there's a way of of doing this better. And then uh, for for those of us then that um, you know are a little bit crazy, we say, well, how can we? You know, how hard can it be to solve that problem by building a business on our own? Because we all know how easy it is to start a business. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, so I think I think it's just we 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 you know, like all over the country, we have. We, we've been lucky with the inward investments and that, you know, maybe we've created some of our own luck through the, uh, the how easy it is to do business here in Ireland and also the talent available, right? Uh, plus, uh, plus uh, Ireland is, is a very attractive place to come to, to live and work and lots of people want to come and live here. So you have a, you have, you have a talent pool and you have, you have that kind of, that kind of ecosystem available to, um, you know, to create those conditions to innovate, you know, um, which is, I think, which is interesting. But maybe back to back to kind of payroll uh, for for a moment. So, I've been um, building HR and payroll software for the best part of twenty years, and one and I kind of got into payroll sideways through an acquisition of a previous company I was involved in. I ended up working at at ADP, um, and it was payroll was one of the first business functions to automate at scale. You know where where computing really took hold, um, and was also probably gave birth to the outsourcing uh, business model as well. So it was a very innovative in the early days, very innovative uh, kind of place to be in terms of business to business uh, type uh, type solutions, and kind of lost its way a bit. But we're really seeing a resurgence in the last few years in terms of um, new entrants into the marketplace and. Um, you know, devising solutions uh, for for a more modern type world, and there's all these kind of things around us. Uh, for instance, like our 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 whole business model is based on being open, and we would have taken inspiration from um, models like Airbnb or Booking.com, or you know, like those companies. They don't. Uh, Airbnb sold more bed nights last year than any other hotel chain around the world, but they don't own a single hotel room, right? Mm. So an open approach to say, well, look, how can we connect buyers and sellers of services? How can we give people control through more open platforms like ours, give them visibility that they need? And essentially what we're doing is we're harnessing technology to disrupt an existing business model. Um, so true innovation for me is that kind of looking at how markets are built, looking at how uh, business models are built and recomposing them somehow, restacking them somehow so that you know, you generate greater value for, for customers, greater, better service, ease of use, and harnessing things like, like technology to give you an advantage there. But really true advantage for me, true innovative advantages uh, for me stem from restacking a market or restacking a business model somehow. And, and that's what we've done um, at Paysar by uh, building a platform that allows customers to leave their existing payroll infrastructure in place, but still at the same time in a very easy and quick way to be able to get that central collaboration between themselves and their in-country payroll providers, get the data all in one place. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, that's, a, that's, I think we're, I suppose we're, 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 we're maybe at the rebirth of the payroll function or rebirth of the, the payroll business model. And, and like companies like FlexiWage here, you know, people continue to be paid. People are are weekly paid, but FlexiWage are making that easy for everyone else. And Alan's company, CR Payroll, have looked at well, actually, what do people really need if someone walks out the door and I have a problem with my payroll and saying, well, here's a service that, again, it's, you know, payroll is payroll, but all three of us have have restacked or are approaching the the problem in, in in three different and innovative ways. Yeah. And I suppose like a lot of sectors, uh, the, as technology has evolved, it, it creates more opportunities within the sector as well to be, to be innovative. I, I, I think so. So if, if I was to go back to when we start, first started building um, HR technology, it was all client server stuff and desktop stuff. Like we're a cloud first business now. And, um, you know, the ease at which the ease at which we can spin up environments and benefit from all of the kind of multifaceted information security controls and disaster recovery pre, uh, permission our, our provisions of those uh, cloud providers is it, just phenomenal. It takes an awful lot of work out of of that for us, which is which is super. So definitely, technology is an enabler, but technology for technology's sake, I'm not a believer in it. You need to yeah. you need to attack the you need to attack the business model. 
Good. Exactly, exactly. And Jonathan, uh, in terms of, like, as, as Trevor mentioned there, you guys have taken something, you know, the, the model that you've built your, your, your business model around and, and being innovative around that. So like, what's your thoughts on, on where payroll has come to now to this point? Yeah, um, I think like when I always look at innovation and I think word innovation gets thrown around a lot um, over the last few years, but a lot of people don't you know what, what does innovation mean? So we look at it as like innovation is taking something that's already there and, and trying to make that process better or, or add value to it. So with, with FlexiWage, what we've done there over the last few years is you said payroll's always been there. Um, whether it's been weekly, uh, maybe two weeks or monthly. And as you said, we're an employee, my it, it might suit them better to get paid weekly to manage bills and different things like that. As, a, as I mentioned in the introduction, it's it costs the employer a lot, you know, a lot more in administration costs and time to run a weekly payroll. So you have 52 payrolls versus, versus 12. And as you said, a lot of employee or employers want to move to a monthly payroll, but they don't want to upset their employees and different things like that. So what we've brought about with payroll is to try and address both those problems, um, allowing the employer to run a monthly payroll, they're only running 12 and reduce costs, but also allowing then the employee to manage their pay and still kind of draw down a weekly pay uh, as and when they need it. So. That's been welcomed by a lot of a lot of companies that we work with at clients. Um, as you said, it's been it's allowed the employer to move to a monthly payroll, and at the same time, it's it's not really impacting the the employee. So it's kind of a win win for for both people. Yeah, um, so that's kind of where we've moved to. Like in terms of where we're at now, and like in the current climate, as I said, um, payroll is is still ha is happening. As I said, we're in we are in unfamiliar territory, and many payroll professionals are finding that their ability to do their jobs is restricted or, or limited to technology available to them. So, I think decisions made in the past around technology investments are now becoming under greater scrutiny as available technologies is being tested to the limit. So, so like there, there's still some businesses out there that are running payroll off off spreadsheets, which. Uh, do you know when 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 they go back to the new normal or things like that, and they're going to catch up with uh, employees' pay and different things like that, and cumulative, there, there could there's definitely a lot of scope there for getting things wrong and stuff like that. So I, I do encourage businesses now to kind of look at what technology they are using, and I think innovation is 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 going to be key going forward. I do. Okay, good, very good. Um. One of the things that um, has kind of has struck me, and, and like we're, we're a, a small scale here in, in my own company, and I look after the payroll function. But one thing about about employee impact in terms of the the, the payroll function is it can it be or is it be uh, is it being used as a communication tool or is it just here's your pay slip and here's the here's your gross pay and here's your net pay and here's the tax you paid? Are, are companies using payroll as as a communication tool or is it still very much stuck in that here's your payslip type environment well i think in terms of as was the, the communication to employees i think the only one that they ultimately care about is the message that they get that it's a correct and on-time paycheck mm -hmm. they don't want to receive an incorrect or a late paycheck yeah. um like so the expectation from employees now is that it's on time, it is correct, and that there's, there is no issues with it. Like if it ends up that it is, um, there's miscalculations on it or that it's late, at times that can end up being actually the last, the last line in, the, in, I suppose, the line of letdowns. Um, there's a lot of ways of communicating um, like to employees like, and, and have enhanced communication, like the platforms that are out there, like from your basic email to your online, the, the meet, online meetings, your phone calls, and you can use that tiny little bit of space that might be available on your payslip, um, but not all employees then do actually check their payslips on a regular basis, probably a or lot more account, doing it now. Yeah, it's yeah. the bank account. It is the bank account. They see that number and they're, they're happy to go. And as long as it's there on time, then that's what's important to them. 
Um, with our clients over, like with regard to communication over COVID-19 and kind of the, the changes that have been implemented there as well, like what we've seen work with them is that it's consistent and that it's reliable communication and that they know what's actually going on in real time. It doesn't, the medium, it doesn't really matter to them as long as they're getting the message re in, in real time. Um, and whether that message is actually that we actually don't know or we won't know until a certain date and time, then at least they're getting communicated to. And it is time, time that timely communication really is key. Um, now, we're all acutely aware of mental health. Uh, the mental health awareness is key at the moment. And especially from a payroll perspective, the pressure that has been put on payroll departments to deliver without any fault and on time um, and to perfection has been extreme and it's been it has been really high in the payroll community but what we've seen is that there there has been a growth within the payroll professionals groups that they're kind of chatting more to each other that they're actually forming some communities as well have formed on linkedin um, and they're exchanging views on how you're interpreting all of the different um, legislative requirements that are coming through and then how people are actually working and how people are surviving. Um, you know, 12 hour shifts could be the norm at the moment for some of them running up to payroll. Um, but I think the, the biggest message is that it doesn't need to be complicated. Something as simple as a well-formed, frequently asked questions email that builds on a week by week basis. You've got the historic messages that you've sent out. People can look at them if they need to, but they're also being fed on a regular basis what's up to date. And that in turn then allows your payroll department to concentrate and to dedicate the time that they need to get the outputs correct and to make sure that the payroll is right and it's right first time for all employees. Because Jonathan, you mentioned there, you know, the, the, the raft of information that was coming out from government from, from revenue, and you said, you know, read it once, read it twice to make sure, and then it was it was changing over time. So I suppose that put pressure on payroll managers first to digest all of that, dealing with questions, I suppose, that were coming at them from employees, and then disseminating the, the information and making sure the payroll, as Helen said, is, is, is correct. That must have put extra pressure on the, on the function during this crisis as well. We lost Jonathan. Okay. Jonathan looks frozen there. Looks, I think. Yeah, there <laughs> yeah, Trevor, do you want to do you want to take yeah. up this particular topic for a second? Sure. Yeah. So, so I think I think you know we have an international dimension to our business. So, for in Ireland, for example, the COVID scheme is very flexible. It is what it is. Not everything is certain about it yet, especially the 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 impact later in this year as to. Yeah you know what's going to happen to employees and i think i think there's there's some certainty uh, required around that but also at the same time um i believe from an employee perspective there is a certain um certain uh, there's patience with both employers uh who are who are making you know sustained and good communication um um, updates out to the employee base say look we're not altogether sure this is what it is we'll as soon as we figure it out as soon as we have guidance on this we'll, we'll let you all know what the impact is so we're like for instance in in, in the UK if you're to, co to compare the COVID scheme to the furlough scheme in the UK well you can't actually stay in touch with your business uh, you can't uh, action mm -hmm. work emails etc etc uh, we have another uh, provider client uh, in Spain, and things are, are changing at, at, a, at a rate of knots. So, uh, you know, the important thing from, you know, and I think Helen made some super, uh, some super points about, you know, uh, well-being and uh, the stress people are under and, and, and all of the rest. And um, one of the key things that I think coming out of this crisis is that, you know, we've seen the best of people across the board and there's kind of been a rebalancing of, you know, in a lot of people's lives about the perception of, of the things we just take for granted. Um, employee engagement is one of those key things that are going to help businesses fight their way back uh, from, uh, from the current crisis. Um, and that employee engagement is, is underpinned by, by very good communication, even if the message is there is no message. Uh, we, we just don't know just yet. But staying in touch with the employee. Now, there are certain, there are certain ways in which um, 
employees um, can get little one-liners on the pay slips. They could have access to more enriched employee portals to be able to um, to be able to see and get some of that communication. But but as 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 Helen said, look, you know, let us let us um, as employers kind of put the best foot forward and say, look, everyone is pitching in here. We all know everyone is under pressure. This is the information that we have about the impact of these subsidies on you, because I think in a lot of people's minds, the primary concern right now is, will I have a job next week? <laughs> will I get paid next month? Like the level of uncertainty out there is, is, is high. And there's no denying it. If anyone um, is, you know, any business that's struggling with, 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 with sales or revenue, that, that news just travels around the organization very, very quickly. Mm. You know, they'll see, New customers not being taken on, they'll see orders not going out to uh, to clients not being fulfilled, and they all know they all they all understand uh, what what that is, and a very clear kind of message to say, look, we're doing our best here, we're taking advantage of these schemes, um, we'll 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 work out what that means over over time as soon as that information becomes available, but at least there's a predictability about the cadence of the, of those communications, so everybody knows where where they stand. And, and, you know, the patients employees will have then with employers as, as businesses rebound from this uh, mm. uh, process, you know, that, you know, employers just need to kind of think forward to that point and think about, well, I want an engaged workforce. I want everyone out there as soon as we get back to what, what a new normal might look like. Um, I want everyone fighting tooth and nail for every order that they can pull in. I want every service call to be a fantastic experience for for their customers so that, you know, if we underpin our business here and we, we, um, we you know, we, we, fight our, we fight our way back from, from where we are right now. Um, and one of the things I tell you, it's been heartening where, where I live, um, you know, one of the, just, just completely aside from, from payroll, but it was like Ireland getting back to work was on the 18th of, of May, I went for a walk around where I live and it was like the, you know, every every tradesman in the country to send us to fit windows yeah. to do a bit of painting. Yeah. 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 It, it yeah. was just wonderful. Yeah. It was yeah. like the real economy. It was the real yeah. economy, the mm. people that produce real services getting getting back to work. And yeah. I, you know a lot of vans missing from driveways on, on my walk as well. It was great to see. Oh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it's great. And hopefully with the um Hopefully, with the kind of acceleration that was announced uh, at the end of last week, we'll see we'll see more and more of it. And, uh, and we, look, we all let's face it, we all need it. You know, indeed, yes. indeed. Look, before we go into a, a brief discussion on the future of payroll, we'll have a brief discussion. Of that Rosemary, I think we have our final poll. We do. Give me one second now. Um, so the 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 final poll today is on contingency plans. And have you contingency plans in place for payroll if things do go wrong or when things do go wrong or like they did go wrong in the last three or four months? So um, I hope you can see that up there. You can see that question. So yes, uh, no, or no, we plan to as a result of this crisis. Um, and you know, has this crisis kind of sharpened your mind to start thinking about that potential contingency? Um, uh, and I know our panelists have probably a sub question beyond that. Are those contingency plans robust uh, based yeah. on what Helen and Trevor were saying earlier? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I can imagine yeah. Helen has, has a keen interest in the answer to this question. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> indeed, indeed, indeed. So listen, just to, we're conscious that we, we, we're time wise, but uh, just the final topic, we've kind of looked at, you know, where payroll has come from and the effect and uh, that the crisis, the COVID-19 crisis has had. So I'll be just very keen to, and I think we've permanently lost Jonathan by the looks of it. No, I'm back. back. You there? Back? <laughs> Are you there, Jonathan? Hello, sorry about that. Uh, the challenges of working from home, hey? The internet. Oh, great. Lost. No, brilliant. So. Welcome back. Sorry, I didn't see you on the screen there. Back. No, so um, I'd be just very interested to get, hear each of your thoughts as to, you know, post COVID and beyond COVID, where, where do you see payroll, the payroll function? in the future how will it evolve what you know where is the where are the new innovations going to come from and um, so who wants to jump in first there before i pick someone i'll go cool. <laughs> before you wait we're all, we're, all being very, we're all being very polite <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah what we want what we, want, what we want to do is we want helen to put forward the good ideas and then <laughs> 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 I can come back in the back of that. Oh, you're Ladies so kind first. 
<laughs> so thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> so he- Helen, over to you. Then. Where is where is payroll going? Well, I think just in terms of payroll and in terms of kind of organizations, like one of the, the biggest costs to a business are, are its people, but it's also the people are also, I suppose, the singularly most important asset that the business possesses. Um, and the correct processing of the, MP, the employee payrolls are integral to, I suppose, the continued success and the growth of a business as well. Now, I think over the last um, couple of months, we have seen that the journey has, I suppose, started truly in recognizing payroll as an essential service. Um, but to uh, truly emphasize its strategic importance, I think, within the business, that payroll um, departments and leads need to start collaborating with other people within the business. So what you're looking at is maybe payroll people becoming the storytellers of the people data that they actually work with on a regular basis. We've heard the terms, you know, that is the new oil, that is the new gold. Some people think that is the new soil because there's other elements that need to be put into it as well in order to process it to something that adds value. But from a payroll perspective that you can, that I would see that HR and payroll people using that data in a strategic way so that they can focus on what value generation in the business. And then you're looking at the real understanding of what their people data is telling them. So I think data and uh, them becoming the storytellers of their data because they truly do understand that data and their people. And the insights that you can get from that um, will be, I think, uh, very, a very innovative way to, for them to, to go forward. Yeah, that's a real takeaway phrase from today. I think storytellers of their data, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I, I, as well, I suppose, um, where was I going? I haven't known, I lost my train of thought there now, but um, I think that the, yeah, so no, I, I'll come back to it. I'll think of it again. Uh, Trevor, what are your thoughts on where payroll is going? Well, I suppose, and I touched upon it a little bit earlier, I think we're, we're, re-ban- we're seeing a rebalancing of, of priorities pretty much across all aspects of our lives at, uh, at the moment. Like I think everyone's lives got very small for a period of time there. And, you know, some people got very comfortable with that. Other people, not so much, became very kind of closeted. But one thing I think we, we, we can take away is in terms of, you know, the payroll function within an organization or, you know, through your network of third party providers uh, internationally is that, um, I think I think payroll has been traditionally in, in recent years underinvested in something that could push very far away from uh, from your organization. And I, I think what, what the last few months has kind of shown us is that, well, you might want to take more keen interest in it because mm-hmm. things that Helen mentioned earlier around, you know, keeping employees on site and employee engagement, if you can't pay them right, you know, that contract is broken straight, straight away. So for me, I think there is um, there is uh, hopefully a, a rebalancing of the importance of, of that payroll function and uh, some agility uh, in terms of how organizations uh, um, are, are operating. And, uh, you know, where we see the future going is more inter- interconnected open platforms where it just becomes easier for international businesses to, to transact and, and interact and find good local providers in good local markets through, uh, through applications um, like our own. And I really do like, um, I, I really do like that uh, data-driven uh, type story that, that Helen is, is talking about there because, um, you know, it's, it's, like it's something that we would, we would wholeheartedly agree on, like, the, you know, simple things like getting all of your data from around the world into one place in one format that I can report on in my home, in my home currency mm. is a, it's a real, <laughs> it's a real hygiene factor. Mm. It's a real pain in the yeah. ass thing to do. Yeah. Um, um, but it's something that I think, uh, I think uh, we, we will see increased importance on. So for me, the future is, a rebalancing of the business priority around their, their payroll operations and payroll functions, and uh, a more a more open and an interconnected uh, a more open and interconnected world. Yeah, and it's interesting. I just thought what I was thinking of there, Helen, a minute ago, the the data piece. We we in the big dealing with clients, we have seen so many business models that started out as one thing, and then the realization. Mm-hmm. It, it uh, came about that it was the data that this model was producing was in fact where 
the money was, as opposed mm. to maybe the service of the offering, the initial thoughts around that. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that payroll uh, is, is, will go in that direction as well, that it's, it, it's all about that, that data that's being produced and how valuable mm. that is to the, to the, to the wider organisation. You, you wouldn't believe, um, Aidan, you wouldn't believe how broken it is today and the further away from the home country it is. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, um, in most services businesses, you know, the, the labor component, payroll component is, you know, 65, 70% of, of your P and L, right? Um, so, so it, it, like, it's, it's funny, it, like it's a, a little bit odd or it's um, an indictment in a way about, you know, how little visibility businesses have given the cost component that, that uh, payroll represents. Listen, I have a few questions, and I, I see somebody's hand is raised. We'll get, we'll get to that person in a second. Jonathan, just your 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 thoughts on on the future of payroll, the payroll function, where you guys see it going? Yeah, um, just kind of to reiterate, go to that. Guys have been saying too. Like, I think you know, payroll professionals have probably played a very important part in in the majority of all kind of employees' careers to date, without them kind of really really knowing it. So uh, to ensure that people get paid in time, they get paid the right amount, etc. So going forward, even I think it, it's important for companies to look number one, what payroll functions and technology they have in place, and two, so how how flexible they are to and, and to adapt and to be able to integrate new laws and regulations and things like that, such as COVID nineteen payment scheme and things like that. So I think yeah, going forward. It's important, yeah, for for companies to ensure that they have the, the appropriate staff to to run payroll, and secondly, then the actual the, the appropriate technology to be able to, for the for their staff to do their jobs properly going forward. Good, good, good. I have somebody there with their raised hand, Mark. Yeah. Uh, I'll, 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 do you want to ask uh, your question now, Mark? I'm going to allow Mark to talk now. I just want to also, you can unmute there, Mark. Um, I, I have him unmuted now. Mark, the floor is yours. Great. Uh, this is a question for Tim, Trevor, actually. Um, as part of GDPR, the payroll software was supposed to be providing portability of information, which um, obviously pays are, uh, is, would find useful. Do you see any jurisdictions where this information is actually being uh, swapped between systems and is easily accessible for you? So I suppose if we if we take a look at GDPR and data protection, um, uh, it's a I suppose it came into force um, May nineteen or May eighteen, um, and it's a it's an incredibly important topic. Really, you know, you can move data around the world, provided you have purpose. So understanding uh, employment costs is uh, is a purpose, and you've consent. So that your employees know where the data is 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 moving towards. I think the primary thing is that uh, your providers then are able to give you assurances around protecting uh, protecting your data, and then for you yourself in terms of your relationship with your empl em uh, your employees that you have those consents. And um, because with with open platforms. Um, Often it's the customer is determining where the data is accessed from because they grant access rights to uh, to their employees in different locations around the world. Uh, they also um, are uh, pushing data to different in-country payroll providers around the world. So there is a I suppose there's there's two there's two aspects to it that on the employer side you have the consents you you already have the purpose. Uh, and then making sure that uh, the providers you work with have the necessary information security controls and flexibility then in their applications to allow you to give that fine-grained access to the level of data that you want to move to different, uh, to different parts of the world. Because when people think about moving the data, sometimes they think, oh, my database goes from country A to country B. But a data movement actually under GDPR is if I, if I sign into a system uh, outside of the European Union, uh, and just look at the data on my laptop. That constitutes a data transfer. So hopefully, Mark, may, I, I, I don't. Am I answering your question there? Am I getting to, to? Uh, yeah, that that was good, thanks, Okay, I thanks, Mark. 
I just want to chime in there that that Mark, uh, that's Mark Ogilvy from Parola Software, based here in Waterford. They're a cloud-based payroll system. Um, so I just wanted to give you a shout out. Uh, we, we've worked with the guys before. They're ROS compatible and integrated with Zero. So just to that you understand where where that's coming from. Um, do we have some questions, Rosemary? We do. We have, two, we, have, we have a couple of questions here that we'll try and get done and, and get finished then yeah, in the time. So first question, do you feel that the same issues would have arisen um, due to COVID and payroll if the revenue hadn't changed to PAYE go live in 2019? Once again, um, I'll, leave you, I'll leave it to you guys to jump uh, yeah. in there. <laughs> I think they... Oh, go ahead, oh. Alan, work away. I, I think they would have because I think the issue, the overall issue with regard to um, the revenue um, legislative changes that were coming through was the, the time scale in which they were coming through and the, I suppose, the lack of clarity at times of what was actually required for companies to do. So I don't think from a, a PMOD perspective that that um, had any major implications. It did have certain, but I think that the, the I suppose, the the clarity that was needed around the schemes and the legislative changes that were needed for payroll would have happened whether PMOD had been in place or not. Okay, cool. And the, another question, and we'll wrap it up with this one. Um, do companies, SMEs, actively seek solutions for payroll or is selling payroll solutions into companies a, a very difficult sell? So I think, you know, I, I think we're, we're seeing change in the industry and we're seeing change in what um, companies need to get from uh, their, uh, their, their core payroll services or the core payroll applications. So essentially, I think um, as organizations get larger and they need to put more robust, uh, more robust kind of solutions in place, they have heavier demands then for integration to their uh, finance systems or maybe upstream to their HR systems or their time and attendance systems, commission expense systems. Uh, then I think it, it becomes a natural point where conversations start to happen to say, well, look, you know, how do we manage this on a local level in one country? And then how do we get control of, of this process on an international basis? Because companies, you know, at a far earlier evolution um, than we've ever seen before are now opening up offices and having employees in lots of places around the world. So, so I think there's I think there's internal catalysts within the business that uh, spur them to go to market, and 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 they're just a couple that I pointed out. Okay, cool. Thank you. Excellent. So I'm going to give you the um, the results of the poll. So the the first poll was was your payroll function disrupted during the crisis? Eleven percent of people said yes, fifty percent of people said no, and thirty nine percent said somehow somewhat, but we managed. Um, and then the second poll was have you contingency plans in place for payroll 64% uh, said yes they do 21% no they don't and 14% said no but plan to as a result of this crisis so some interesting, Very interesting. Bits of information Very interesting. Um, just just before we finish up and I do the thank you just a reminder our our sixth uh, webinar is on a two weeks time and it's it's about funding and supports for female founders and female led startups. Uh, we in the big here and Enterprise Ireland are very keen to support the development uh, of, of female led startups in the region and, and nationally. So we're delighted that we have Sheila Daly who heads up the female entrepreneurship department in Enterprise Ireland. And we have two uh, female led startup clients based here in the southeast as well lined up for that so i uh, would encourage uh, as many of you as possible to, to sign up for that uh, before we go i'd just like to thank everybody for signing on today we hope you find it found it uh, beneficial and informative uh, a huge huge thanks to, to trevor to helen and to jonathan uh, from pays our CR, uh, cr payroll and flexi wage for taking the time out today uh, of your busy schedules and for be giving us a very informative and insightful um, look at the payroll function and as I said I'm fascinated that you're in this broad payroll sector but approaching it from very uh, three very very different ways so guys thank you so much for giving the time we really do uh, appreciate it and lastly just a thanks to, to the team here in the big for, for organizing this and promoting it the last few weeks to Rosemary, Siobhan uh, and, and Denise so um, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there um, and we'll talk to everybody very very soon so okay. Ciao. Thank you. Thanks, Aidan. Thanks, Rosemary. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.